Boy, does it feel good to be back in this house. Hi, we are back in a very empty and echoey house and it feels really good to be back here. I just filmed a video doing a walkthrough of all of the things that I need to get done in this place to touch it up after not having lived here for three years and the things that I have plans to do around the house to make it really nice and finish it off to the standard that I want it to be. As I mentioned in that video, Hayley and the dogs haven't arrived in the UK yet. I'm going back to Korea gonna meet them and we're gonna move. I'm just here for a week to be with family, do some stuff that needs to get done and uh, work on the house a little bit. So I'm very lonely without my little family around but it's gonna be really nice when they walk in and hopefully a lot of this stuff has been done this week. My first plan of action is to do a little bit more work on trying to lift some of this mildew off the butch block countertop and maybe see if I can sand it down and seal it. I'm gonna prep some of the walls for painting. I think I'm gonna start in the breakfast nook and the kitchen. And then I don't know, we'll be onto something else, but that's, that's gonna keep me occupied for a couple of days. I did some research online and somebody said Barkeeper's Friend is really good for this kind of issue. Doesn't say anything about using it on wood, but we're gonna try it. Don't mind me being overly cautious. This smells really strong. I'm gonna leave it for a minute, like it says, and then I'm going to use the scrubby side of this sponge and hope that it looks at least a little bit better. <laughs> That is pretty badly damaged and the wood is like pulling away in some of the worst areas. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna sand it. Just hope for the best. I looked into it and you can't really varnish butcher box because of the proximity to food. So I'm wondering if there's like a kitchen worktop safe varnish I could use. I'm thinking that the only option might be to go darker, but we'll see. We will see. I thought I needed a cloth for this, but it turns out I can use a paintbrush. I'm nervous. This half is done and sealed. This section had a lot of wear and tear and it's looking so much better. This section I'm going to do a bit later because it's still wet or I cleaned it. And I also don't want to kick up a lot of dust that will settle in the wet oil. It's looking mildly better, but not good. Hi from a different location. I just wanted to jump in because I wanted to quickly talk about how I'm approaching 
this next stage of the renovation, season two, I guess you could call it, very differently to how I did it when I first got the house back in 2018, because I've learned a lot in those years. And I think now that I'm older, I'm way more meticulous and I want to approach things in a very, very different way. When I was filming this back in September, I only had a week and you'll see these upcoming videos. I'm just doing as much as I possibly can. So I was thinking a lot about how I want to go about it, but I didn't have time to articulate that in the video. So I just wanted to pop in in the first one of the bunch and just let you know like what I'm gonna do differently. When I first got the house, I was very much on a mission to learn as I go, which it, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I think that's how I learn personally. And I think to be honest, a lot of that was to do with my, at the time, undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> But now that I'm a bit older and I know myself better, I'm trying to go into this learning more upfront. There's definitely gonna be things that I learn as I go and challenges that I face that I have to work around. But I think learning as much as I can before I start a project is probably, um, probably gonna help me. <laughs> and I really hope that's gonna come across in the next year or so in my videos. So stay tuned, some growth is on the way. What I definitely have learned over the years is that the more preparation I put into whatever I'm doing, the less work and the less revisions I have to do in the long run. And this is where today's video sponsor comes in, Skillshare. Perhaps you didn't know that you can actually take interior design classes on Skillshare? Well, you do now. Let me tell you a little bit more about how I'm using Skillshare to level up my knowledge of interior design practices and home renovation techniques so that I can use that in my upcoming project. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. They offer thousands of classes led by experts across different areas of specialization in design, illustration, productivity, photography, and so much more. They offer a unique way to study through learning paths, which are curated classes that help you master a specific skill that can help take your hobbies, career, or passions to the next level. There are a few new updates that Skillshare have launched recently, including smarter class categories, new class topics such as creative careers, AI and innovation and more, and the ability to find classes by software and material. Here are a few of the classes that I've started and some that I've bookmarked to take next so that I can take my interior design knowledge to the next level. If you're interested, you can join Skillshare and get one free month of premium. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and thank you to you guys for watching it. So what can you expect from me moving forward with these projects? I'm also going to try and be less impulsive and that's why you'll see me use warm white all over the house to begin with because I love color and I want to use a lot of color in the house. But I made a lot of color choices when I first moved in and the colors were just not cohesive at all. A lot of them felt very gloomy and they didn't reflect well in the space. And I think to avoid spending a lot of money and wasting paint, it's best to just paint everything warm white and live with it until I know how things are gonna feel in the space and which colors should go where. It might be that I paint more rooms different colors, it might be that I just use color in the soft furnishings and in other ways, but we'll figure it out as we go along. And I'm so excited because I'm going to be decorating with Hayley as soon as we land. Obviously the next few videos are just gonna be me because I was there on my own but Hayley is gonna be making quite a few more cameos in the videos, we're gonna do a lot of stuff together. And what I'm gonna try and do is navigate how to combine our styles together. Hayley is the sweetest person in the world. She would let me decorate the house however I wanted. I could do a unicorn mural on the wall and she'd be like, that's amazing, I'm so proud of you. So sneakily, over the last few months, I've been trying to get an idea of what her style is by showing her pictures like, do you like this, do you like that? And I think what I've gathered is she likes mid-century furniture, bright pops of colour. So pretty much on par with what I like as well. I think I'm going to tone down a lot of the pastels that I used to have in the house. So we'll see where it goes, but I'm really excited to make sure that Hayley loves the house just as much as I do. I also want to do this while being mindful of the fact that it's a Victorian house. And if we like mid-century decor, how are we going to do that in a thoughtful way? Well, we'll figure it out. Anyway, I think I've been talking for a really long time, so let's jump back into the video. Did you do connections? Yeah, I did. It was a hard one today. Was it? Yeah, I didn't like that one as much. I didn't like it as much, but I got it. Yeah, me too, but I was like, I was sweating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. The strand one is a little hard effort. Oh, I really liked strands. I thought it was quite easy. I miss you. Aww. I wish you were here doing all of this with me. 
Can you do it? Do you want to do it? Hey, Jane. Hey. <laughs> Stop doing that. She's screenshotting me. It's so cute when you do that. Yeah. Look at my DIY queen. <laughs> Becoming my favorite DIY YouTuber. Um, was I not before? Who was your favorite DIY YouTuber before me? You're the only one that I know. You and Hands in Nature. Oh yeah, it's been a long time since you put Hands in Nature on for the dogs. Yeah. I'm gonna use the sandals real quick. Hateful being. Being paying for very expensive flights for you to come and live here. Don't be hateful. Yeah. Yeah, being. I'm so stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Go have a shower. I guess. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a bit of paint here. So I'm gonna take this off. Oh, shit. It's some heavy. Shit. Try to be careful this time. As you guys know from my last video, I mentioned I'm going to be color drenching this entire house with the same shade all over just to begin with and then we can reintroduce color. Is it technically color drenching if it's like an off-white? I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. All of the baseboards and the trim are going to be the same color as the walls and the ceiling. If you're wondering how that works with the woodwork, I'll show you later, but I'm going to use a varnish on top of it so that it's more durable and also that it has a different finish from the walls so you can kind of see a slight difference between the two. Anyway, this is the end of day one. As you can see, I'm all prepped and I've even started doing some of the painting ready for day two. Good morning, this is day two in the house. I'm tackling a lot of the painting work this week. I started in the breakfast nook yesterday and then my camera battery died and it was getting a bit dark, so I decided let's pump the brakes. Let me show you what the color looks like on the wall. So as you can see from the top, this is the previous color up here. It's pulling really gray. I thought it was kind of like a light lilac, but it's super gray. And this is the color I chose, which I got color matched to Wimborne White from Barrow and Ball. And I got that in the Valspar Trade type of paint. <laughs> you can see here I've done one coat and on this little section right here, I've done two coats. The rest needs a second coat as well. I'm actually gonna start in this section today because there's a little splodge in the corner that's really bothering me and we're gonna see what we can get done. Please excuse the awful overhead lighting. It is raining so badly outside, but it's a very cozy day. So, a good day to paint. Okay, where do I begin? I hate doing all the taping. I find it so boring. I just wanna get started, but I'm really pleased I did this yesterday. I'm very pleased, because now I can just paint. <sighs> okay.
Well, seeing as I've cut out all the little background noises so that I can listen to all of the music from my teenage years while I redo this house, I thought I'd come in and have a little chat quickly because there's nothing else you can listen to except the sound of my voice. By this point, I'd managed to get most of the breakfast nook done and I'd even started in the kitchen. But as you can tell, I don't have a ladder, so I had to wait until I found one to get up to the very top and do the ceilings as well. So I wasn't as quick with the painting as I hoped I would be, but I'm still pretty impressed with what I got done on the first couple of days. And we managed to make a bit of progress, but not much on the butcher block countertop. This is taking forever. Here's the current state of the countertop. It's looking better, but kind of worse at the same time. I don't think I can do much more sanding without it becoming like really wobbly because I can definitely feel some grooves in the wood now. And that's the pile of sawdust just from this one patch. I don't have a dustpan and brush, so I'll deal with that later. I think this might be as good as it gets for now but I'm gonna do one more round of oxygen bleach and see if that pulls any more of this stain up. Fingers crossed. So day one and two were very busy. Day three, I just came up for like a couple of minutes to check in on the house and I decided to open up this box and see what was inside. Do a little haul of all of my old stuff that I managed to keep, which is so nice that I can now fill my house with stuff that I already have and I don't have to rebuy anything new. So thanks to my Nan for holding on to this stuff for me. I also tested out the varnish that's going on all of the woodwork where I've painted it with the interior paint so that it will seal it and it will make it more durable so it won't scratch or scuff or anything like that and then we'll see how that holds up and I'll come back and finish all of those bits during the week. I'm going to end the video here so I'm just going to show you what it looks like at the end of days two slash three and then we'll carry on where we left off next week so I will see you next time. Bye!